Welcome to the three-part presentation, Hamilton, Social Justice Lessons from Critical Race Theory. My name is Dr. Tony Dunbar. This online presentation is a follow-up to a talk given on February 15th of 2017 at Moraine Valley Community College located in Palos Hills, Illinois. The talk was part of both Moraine Valley's One Book, One College series featuring the soundtrack from Hamilton, as well as being part of the college's 2017 Black History Month events. Let me share the talk outline. This is the original abstract used to promote the campus presentation. Simply put, this wordy description states, based on the hyper success of the musical Hamilton, it is now part of America's cultural, political, and economic discourse. Therefore, because Hamilton has reached almost institutional status on the American landscape, it provides a great context for a social impact, social justice analysis. Let's use a visual to help unpack the talk. Looking at Hamilton through the critical race theory or CRT lens allows us to have a great social impact and social justice discussion. This is part one of a three part presentation. Part one, we get to a clear and precise understanding of the term critical. We will also go over the origins and development of critical theory, as well as the path from critical theory to critical race theory. In part two, we discuss and share what is a critical race theory lens and how it can best be utilized. Then in part three, we apply the critical race theory lens to the musical Hamilton. As shown here, there are several definitions of critical. Let's discuss those most applicable. First, definition three relates to truth. The opportunity for more contribution, participation, negotiation of what truth actually is. Similarly, definition five takes a point of critical analysis for the purpose of expanding and broadening a topic or context. For example, Critically, critically analyzing a local phenomena and applying it to a national context. In a media-driven example, it would be broadening the distribution of knowledge on a topic through the means such as blogs, articles, documentaries, scholarly papers, books, etc. From a social justice perspective, definition seven is the need for a responsive discourse and or action on an issue at a crucial moment in time. Critical theories differ from traditional theories. More specifically, the purpose of traditional theories is to explain and understand what we experience. While on the other hand, critical theories by design have a more activist agenda, seeking to change what we experience or at least how we think about what we experience. Now that we understand the term critical and what is uh, critical theory, Let's look at the evolution, the lineage from critical theory to critical race theory. Critical theory was originally developed by German Jewish, Jewish scholars who are advocates of the work of Karl Marx and Frederick Engels. Based on their Marxist beliefs and social activism in Germany, they eventually fled Germany as Hitler's power rose and the danger for German Jews in Germany grew. In developing critical theory, the Frankfurt scholars were looking to counter something known as positivism. Positivism is the belief that the only knowledge is scientific knowledge. Basically, natural sciences rule. Knowledge is only knowledge when it is derived from the natural sciences. In response, critical theory paved the way for much of the work that is done in the current discipline of sociology. Let me share a little bit about the critical theory founders. Max Horkheimer, his work focused on class struggle and social domination. Theodore Ardano's scholarship led to the academic discipline of cultural studies. Ardano 
offer critical insights as to how cultural dynamics such as art, music, literature, and media consumption serve to manipulate society. We can think that applies even today. If we keep in mind his work could be considered prophetic if we apply social manipulation to the current use of social media. The third founder, Herbert Marcuse, believed large groups within society are caught up in the distraction that averts their attention away from the repressive agents operating in their lives. More specifically, material production and the pursuit of material gains run counter to the notion of critical thinking, critical commentary, or critical actions. His most famous work, and still often cited work, is the book One Dimensional Man. Here we share three distinct periods in the development of critical theory. I know here the third period also featured next generation critical theory thought scholars. Most notably among those new next generation scholars was Hergen Habermas. Critical theory of the Frankfurt scholars evolved into critical legal studies or CLS. CLS scholars argue that the American judicial decision-making process is not a value-neutral process. Rather, it's political through and through. Not only is law political, it's political with a tilt. It favors those persons and groups who already are well-favored in America, those that might be considered privileged. The civil rights movement of the 1960s paved the way for critical legal studies. Many of the students participating in civil rights movements of the 1960s were the critical legal scholars of influence in the 1970s and 80s. Names to note in the development evolution of CLS include Duncan Kennedy, Roberta Unger, Morton Horowitz, Catherine McKenna, and Alan Hunt, just to name a few. In the mid-1980s, critical theory began to once again evolve. Legal scholars of color and those interested in race-conscious legal justice issues sought to broaden the CLS platform. This move was not necessarily a change of topic, rather it was a move toward solidarity for those that identified that the better suited work of their self-perception was work around race. Secondly, some CLS scholars, namely those of color, were confronted by the lack of opportunities to express concerns about varying points of disenfranchisement inside the legal system, such as race. Basically, the frustration stemmed from what some characterize as an overbearing atmosphere of white male privilege, even among a community with a similar social justice mindset. One of the results of this fallout was the initiation evolution of critical race theory, or CRT. CRT emerges at a critical moment in time. The relentless and consistent criminalization of African Americans was in hyperdrive in the 1980s, most prevalently reflected by the war on drugs. Thus, critical race theory is critical not only for its point of analysis in regards to race, but also it is emerging at a critical moment in time. CRT was a response through scholarship and activism to counter the effects of the American criminal justice system's adverse effect on communities of color, namely black communities. Two of my favorite documentaries that illuminate events of the 1980s that led to the need for legal scholars to address race are the 2005 documentary, Letter to the President. This was executive produced by Quincy Jones and narrated by the rapper Snoop Dogg. Letter to the President discuss many of the post-civil rights movement struggles, including the 1980s war on drugs through a lens of hip hop music. For a more in-depth understanding of the legacy of the criminalization of blacks, a process that began at the passing of the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery and continues to the present. I highly recommend the Ava DuVernay 2016 documentary 13th. Yes, events of the 1980s are key in this documentary. However, 13th beautifully lays out longitudinal evidence 
of the systematic criminalization of black folks. This concludes part one of Hamilton's social justice lessons from critical race theory. I highly encourage you to view parts two and three. In part two, we discuss and share what is critical race theory lens and how it can best be utilized. Then in part three, we apply the critical race theory lens to the musical Hamilton.